everybody, welcome back to the channel, Shayna here, and today I have for you guys a humongous book outlet haul. You guys can't even see like the whole box. Um, it came in a pretty big box, uh, but today the haul is not only coloring books, but reading books. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the coloring books and we'll do full flip throughs and then um, I'll go to the reading books. So if you guys are just here for the coloring, then you can just leave once those are done if you're not interested in the reading books. So yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the floor <laughs> and then we'll just start digging in. Um, I don't remember what I paid for these books, but at Book Outlet, it's never more than like, like $7 typically for the coloring books. So we'll go ahead and pull these out and I'll put them off to the side and I don't have to keep reaching down. All right, so the first one on the pile, these are in no particular order is A Million Dogs by Lulu Mayo, and you guys have probably seen this book a bajillion times, but we'll go ahead and flip through it anyway. Um, <clears throat> I did flip through these a little bit, like just kind of glance through them uh, when I first got them, but yeah, I am super excited to have this one. I have A Million Owls that I still haven't colored in, but this was such a good price that I had to get it, and I love dogs, so there's owls and dogs in this picture. Super cute. Having a, what is he doing? <laughs> Stretching, having a little pumpkin patch party, maybe. Super cute. So yeah, I'm gonna try to go through these pretty quickly because um, we've got a lot to get through and I am filming um, right before work, which is not always my smartest idea, but that's okay. I absolutely adore this page. It's a little pug tato. <laughs> How cute. At least that's what I think he is, because he looks like a potato, but he's a pug, hence pug tato. And we have some wiener dog mandalas. <laughs> so cute. <clears throat> oh, tap dancing. He doesn't look so happy. Oh, maybe he's fending him off. Oh, took his hat, took her hat or his hat. <clears throat> cute. hodgepodge of dogs and these would be fun to color them like non-realistic colors too I think it's a little hard to break in so hopefully you guys can still see the pages all right and I tried to turn the contrast down on my video so hopefully again you can still see the pages okay this is a really pretty mandala It's adorable. I love the balloons and stuff that she puts in her books. They're very fun. So yeah, I think if I had to compare the two, I still like the owls the best, but this one is super cute too. Look at the little Frenchy, how sweet. There's lots of eggs in this book, <laughs> which had I known that, I could have used this for um, Danny Buttons's scavenger hunt. Famous paintings with dogs. This has quite a few pictures in it. Um, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, they are double-sided. So if you want to use your alcohol markers, you just have to sacrifice the page on the other side. I really like this one. That's really pretty. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> He's like, don't leave me. in the book the wrong way sorry oh I like that one so cute circus dogs and that is a million dogs by Lila Mayo then we have secrets of the sea by Deborah Muller and Zen Doodle um, enchanting underwater discoveries to color and display um, I guess it came from Walmart but I didn't pay $11.98 so they are perforated pages so you can pull them out and I think there's 60 plus images in this book, like most Sun Doodle books. And this one's also super cute. Again, I didn't go through all of the pages, but love that. I really need to color in more of my Sun Doodle books. Oh, a stingray. I'm obsessed. I love stingrays. <clears throat> Dolphins. She's 
sleeping in a seashell, conch shell. She must be a pretty tiny mermaid. Or that's a massive conch shell. So cute. Oh look, otters. Another scavenger hunt item. Do otters live in the sea though? Aren't they ocean, or uh, wow. Sea and ocean are the same thing, but aren't they like river mammals? River dwellers? That one's cool, I like the sharks. The puffer fish, I like puffer fish too, they're cool. <clears throat> sea lion. Gerald, <laughs> if you guys have seen Finding Dory. But yeah, of course it's in her like signature style with the Zen Doodly items and then some non Zen Doodly. Super pretty. Again, a lot of pages in this book and I just missed one. There's a crab. Shipwreck. These would be really fun with pastel colors. Look, a flying fish. Those are so weird to me. <clears throat> what are these things? Jellyfish of some sort, or is that a plant? Oh, I guess it's a plant. Catfish. Sardines, he looks hungry. <laughs> Oh, that one's pretty. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Again, must be another tiny mermaid. More sea lions. A manatee! Cool. Swordfish. That's cool. This is like another thing that I just want to like scratch those off of there. <laughs> Seahorse. Oh, this would be fun in like really bright colors. Mermaid sure what she's looking at. There's a sand dollar down there. We found a bunch of sand dollars last time we went to the beach. That was fun. Your seahorse. <laughs> this shark looks kind of derpy, but it's super cute. He's like, hmm. <laughs> a whale. Jellyfish. I don't know what that is. Are there, aren't there sea, is that a sea dragon? Is that what they're called? It looks like a stone crab, maybe, because don't they take on, like, they kind of look like stones, that's how they got their name. Hammerhead shark. A narwhal, unicorns of the sea. I like all the sea turtles, too. Oh, that's pretty. It's like a tiara. We're getting there, friends, We're getting there. <laughs> Hermit crab. I accidentally picked up a hermit crab last time I was at the beach, too. I thought it was just a seashell. Nope. Squeeds. <clears throat> Lionfish. They're fun, too. I like their bright orange and yellow colors. Sand dollar. I'm not sure what those are. Urchids. An eel down there in the bottom. He looks scary. Oh, I like the starfish. That's pretty. Kind of like a starfish mandala. Another mermaid. Ooh, that's cool. The castle on top of the conch shell. That's really neat. That one's fun. So that is... I forget what it's called. <laughs> But and then it tells you a little bit about the book back here. 60 original illustrations of deep sea wonders. Okay, so, well this says more than 60 and this says 60. I, I'm not gonna count, so it's around 60. Um, and then it's Secrets of the Sea by Deborah Muller. Um, I'm gonna save this next one for last. Oh, and then I also picked up Kitties and Cities. This one is also by Deborah Muller. I saw this on, I think, Michelle's channel at Kits and Caboodles. I'm gonna zoom you guys out just a little. Um, and I was like, that is so cute. It kind of reminds me of the Dogs on Vacation one that if you guys watched my scavenger hunt video, you have seen. <laughs> Dior Chanel, she's a fancy cat. <clears throat> this looks like New York City.
Harry Cat Fay. <laughs> They're also um, fancy. Feeding the birds. Oh, they're at the ballet. How cute. Love that one. Arc de Triomphe, it looks like. In Paris again. Oh, how cute. Little New Year's kisses. Big Ben. <laughs> He's got his tongue out. This is so cute. I don't think I really flipped through this one at all. Subway. That one's knocked out. Maybe Rockefeller Center. That's kind of what it looks like. Skating. <clears throat> this is in Korea. In Seoul, I believe. With the locks on the fence. <laughs> Cute. Nice stand. <clears throat> she looks like she's drooling over those fish. Party! Maybe. Oh, that might be New York, too. The New Year's. Eve party. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, that was unexpected. <coughs> Fun. I like just the generic cities too. Hotel Shaw. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe she was a fortune teller, but she's getting her nails done. City Paws. <coughs> Cats rule. Water Rebel. I think this is Seattle with the Space Needle. Oh yeah, and she's got her Starbucks coffee. Public market. Aw, singing in the rain. How cute. City Kitty Cafe. <laughs> $3 for milk, goodness. But free refills, so there you go. Cool cat. <clears throat> Must be San Francisco. Perlesque. <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. Outlaws Club. Another Rebel. Irish Pub. Catnip Ale. Irish Coffee. Cute. She's maybe at the ballet that we saw being performed earlier. I don't know. Making up stories, as always. There's our little fancy lady from the front. These planes look dangerously close to each other. <laughs> Mona Lisa. Menu. <laughs> Had a nice dinner, got to clean up, I guess, like in the spas. Cute. This is so fun, Vegas Chapel. Live music, another Elvis cat. 100% chance of rain, maybe that's Orlando. <laughs> it's always raining. Nashville, that's cute. Country music cat. USS cat. <laughs> Sushi, that one's fun. Jazz. Cat butts. <laughs> it's not a cat uh, book if there's no cat butts. Oh no, she's got splashed by the bus. <clears throat> That's interesting, a cat walking a dog. Okay. <laughs> Subway station. Oh, this is so cute. Cat fighting. <laughs> <clears throat> Nine Lives Cafe, that's pretty. I like that. I like the little scenes. This one's really cool with the brick wall and everybody doing their own thing. St. Louis. <clears throat> Not sure what this one is. Cable car, San Francisco maybe again. Oh, maybe it was New Orleans, because she's got beads on in this picture. I don't know. Cute, though. That's fun. So, yep, another more than 60 illustrations of the daily life of city cats. <laughs> Perforated pages. Make artwork easy to separate. New adventures await in kitty town. How cute. So, I guess it's supposed to be, like, one city, 
but she put landmarks in of all the pop, like, um, big cities that we know. That one was fun. Super cute. Had to get that one, like I said, because I saw it on Michelle's channel. And then this one was just kind of, um, I picked it up because it was there. Um, <laughs> a Body Ink Envy, so it's a multi-level coloring book, and I think that does explain this one because there's some very intricate images and some easier images. And I guess you can, like, seek and find over here, looks like. Let me get into the pages. Let's um, oh, I keep moving it the wrong way. Zoom. That's in. Yeah. Okay. So there's images. This is again double sided, and it has super thick line art for the most part, which is good for most of you guys. I know you guys like that. I do too. But yeah, some really pretty images. Other than that one. And then yeah, there's some mazes and stuff. So. It's different. It was worth it to pick up. Again, a book that I would want to use, like, um, water-based mediums in. Oh, look at the bat. He's so cute. Poor kids. <clears throat> They're very, like, different tattoo styles, too. Like, that Japanese, traditional hummingbird. Look at his little feet. I didn't realize they had little feet like that. I don't know why, because they land on things, but... you. So cute. <laughs> Just tucked up. That one's pretty. Lots of different subject matter. Oh, I like this a lot too. The, like, Mendy. Well, this is Mendy, but I think the hand over here is really pretty. <clears throat> More hummingbirds. So cute. Lizards, some fish. What is this called? A hippogriff? Hippo something? Not a hippogriff. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> Lots of hummingbirds. Another maze. That tiger's fun. That would be fun to do in like different shades of oranges. Bugs. I'm not a fan of the bugs. I really like the street catcher. That's pretty. Some wigs. So yeah, you can see that there are definitely different styles. Levels, I guess, is the book calls it. I thought it started raining, but I don't think it has. Oh, okay. <laughs> just splayed itself out. I can tell that the pages are gonna pull out of this one, but that's okay, it was cheap. Um, but yeah, I don't really like when companies glue their books together. Ah, see? I didn't even push that hard when I went to push it down, but that's okay, again. There's definitely images in here that I would pick and choose and probably use my alcohol markers on um, yeah, like, I like this image. I don't necessarily need that one. Ooh, these are really thick, dark pieces. Another maze. So, yeah, this one was just something I just was like, eh, let's throw it in the cart. Probably to get to free shipping. <laughs> Oh, that one's cute. I really like that. And the owl. But I like this owl better than I like this owl, so I'd probably do the cat instead of this one. So you can pick and choose like that. It's your book. You can decide to do whatever you want. So yeah, it says a multi-level coloring book. Start coloring your right way to serenity. So yeah, that one was just cause. <laughs> and then I picked up... Mythographic Aquatic, which you guys have probably, again, all seen um, a lot of. These books are pretty popular, so we'll go pretty quick through this one. Um, single-sided? Yeah, single-sided. Um, and a lot going on. Oh, that's pretty. 
sea turtle. It's kind of hard to tell what these are until you really were to like go in and color, I think. I think, personally. And see what's what. Puffer fish. Oh, more stingrays. I love stingrays so much. More flying fish. What are these, whales? Yeah, I think, I think so. Are they sperm whales with the flat heads like that? Oh, more stingrays, yay. And there's a little girl dancing in there. Well, at least it looks to me like she's dancing. <clears throat> yeah, they're super pretty pages. Just a heck of a lot going on. They would, once I start, I have the animals book too, and once I start coloring in them, it'll take me probably forever to finish a page, but you know. Oh, that's pretty. The fox inside. I guess that's like a jellyfish. Cool. And then this one also has the seek and finds. Like there's a there's some strawberries. <laughs> and there's a belt on the bottom too. Ooh, she's gorgeous. This one is my favorite. I love this page, so I probably won't color it for a while <laughs> until I'm comfortable in these books, but she is so pretty. Squaring up with an octopus or squid. Octopus, I think. I should not be tired. Maybe I overslept. I don't know. I didn't feel like I got too much sleep this weekend, so I slept in a little bit today since I could. I also haven't had coffee, so that could be why. She's got a horn too. Cute. Lionfish. Sharks. Sharks of some sort? Whale sharks? I'm not sure. Orcas? I don't know. Sharp teeth down there. More flying fish. That's cool, she's sitting in the umbrella. This one has a ton of pages too. <clears throat> Big old toad. That's fun. This is what I was thinking of, but I don't know what they're called. The wh those whales. <gasps> what are these things? They look like blobs. Blobfish? No, I'm kidding, but they were, I guess, a little bit whimsical. That's what he was going for there. Oh, that's cool. A slug. Sea slug. like a sea monster or something going on there. Ooh, what is that sound? <clears throat> oh, that's cute. Little fairy. It's like they're, oh my goodness. Sorry, discovering this world. And then there's your answer key, which we don't really have to go through. Yeah, so that is Mythographic Aquatic. Not too much to say about that one. It's been around for a while, but um, I had been debating on getting it. And then when I saw it on Book Outlet, I was like, okay, fine, I'll get it. <laughs> so there's that one. And then we have, oh no, it got bent in my box. Shoot. I'm going to have to put something on it to, um, I guess I squashed it in there after I opened it. I'm going to have to put something on it to flatten it back out. Whoopsie. Um, this is Color by Number Birds and Butterflies. Um, the artist is F. Sanaz Bach. So, yeah, I saw this one on, I believe, uh, A Colorful Life's channel. So, about the author and archaeologist by training artist F. Sanaz Bach is celebrated for her radiantly colorful and charming painted stones, which are available through her Etsy shop. Um, she lives in Alba Adriatica, Italy, a small town on the Adriatic Sea. To see more of Sanaz's work, visit her Facebook page.
I do not know how to say that because it's in Italian. <laughs> and we have our table of contents. It tells you a little bit about her paintings and color. And then here's the color key. So for this book, you might want to scan this and then um, print it out because it's not on every page. So you'd have to flip back and forth. And then there's some sample pages of her work. You can tear them out. I like this one. I think it's very cute. <laughs> and then you get into your coloring pages. There we go. Centered. And sorry, Danny, about the birds. And sorry, Emily, about the butterflies. <laughs> I don't mind coloring like cartoony birds like this. Um, and I don't mind birds on pictures. I just don't like them in person. But yeah. Ooh, that's a peacock. So yeah, you guys can skip ahead. These, that one kind of reminds me of a moth, but these are all right. I love this owl. Dragonfly. So yeah, all birds and butterflies. That's a pretty buddy butterfly. I got a notification and I was reading it. <laughs> got distracted. What else is new? Oh, a cardinal. Very cute. I love cardinals. Probably because my grandma loves cardinals. They remind me of her. <sighs> this one's a little dusty, it feels like. Or maybe it's just my table. I don't know. <laughs> But I like the that the backgrounds are colored. Owls. I wish I kind of wish like this background was the color of the paper. <clears throat> but that's okay. Mm. So yeah, I would still put something between though because um like this would definitely bleed through. It is thicker paper, but it would still bleed through unless you're using your water-based markers. Even then, I would still put something between because I don't trust them that much. <laughs> trust them enough to use on like double side, like double-sided for the most part, as long as I don't press too hard. But yeah, and then it's got your key on both sides. So that is color by number birds and butterflies, and she's got animal friends and flowers and mandalas. So I am on the lookout for those as well, um, but I did not see them this time around. So yeah, so I'm gonna have to try to flatten this out. I'm a little annoyed at myself because I know I did that. It didn't come like that, but that's okay. It'll, we'll fix it. And then the next one is again, something I was just super curious about. So I picked it up because I thought it was really freaking adorable. And I haven't flipped through this one. Well, I did a few pages and then I was like, this is too cute. I need to um, just do it on camera. So it's Kaleidoscope Coloring Pug Acorns and Friends. So it's Pug Unicorns and then everything else that's cute. And it came with these little markers. So one of these days I'm gonna do a color and chat with the markers and one of these pages. Maybe next week, we'll see. So we've got Kaleidoscope Coloring Pug Acorns and Friends. And then up on top here, it says, it's got like techniques. Um, so the, oh, their scented markers are perfect for coloring tools to bring these cute and quirky creatures to life. Um, who knows if they'll work, who knows how long this book has been sitting in the warehouse, but we'll try. Um, use the included markers to create masterpieces that charm the eyes and nose, or use them along with colored pencils to add depth to your designs. You could even take your coloring to the next level and try using a variety of decorative techniques to add details to your cookie creatures. <clears throat> Fun. So, we'll go ahead and I'm going to try to get you guys uh, in frame because of the way that this is, I can't really see um, where I'm at, the way that these pages are flipping. So yeah, so cute little kisses and candy and cookies. Got our first pug of corn. It's pug of corns with wings. <laughs> and then some unicorns. They are just so stinking cute. I love these pages. Look at the little penguin. I can't. So adorable. Oh, we've got gems for shells. How cute. 
So yeah, if I find more like this, I will definitely be picking them up because this is adorable. And they're single-sided and they've got thick line art. How can you go wrong? More puggy corns in space. So sweet. I love this little <clears throat> flamingo too with all her jewels. She's all bedazzled. This would be fun to like put actual diamonds on from diamond painting if you guys have them. Pugs and cupcakes. Cute. We've got our unicorns of the sea. Norwal Norwals. Narwhals? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Apparently. Fluffy round friends. So cute. Oh my god. Sloths in space. Puppy and kitty balloons. That one's kind of creepy. <laughs> Bunnies. Bunny royalty. And then we've got taco cats and dogs. Puggicorns on a picnic. Oh my god. I can't. It's so cute. Uh, I almost said a corn band, but like, I don't know. I don't know. They all have horns. <laughs> a unicorn animal band. There we go. We've got elephants with wings. Oh my gosh. It's all so stinking cute. And um, cloud snails. A bear in space. Oh, I love it. It's so adorable. I can't wait to color in this. <clears throat> Unicorn. Pegacorn. Peg <laughs> That's not right. Aren't they called alicorns or something? Llama cookies. <gasps> More flamingos. They're just so stinky cute. Ice creams, pirate penguins. Oh my God, that's fun. For these croissant cats, <laughs> octopi. Oh, so cute. They're picking flowers. Fruit, cool fruit. Norwals and dolphins in space. There's a lot of them in space. <laughs> Costume party. Cute. And then popsicles. Oh my god. It's so adorable. I'm so glad I picked this one up. And it, like I said, if I find um, more like this, I will definitely be picking them up. I know Color with Donna had something like this, but I don't... When I watched her video back, I don't think it's the same thing, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, so Donna, if you're watching, let us know down below because I can't remember... Um, cause I was like, oh, we could body color, but I don't think it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, so that is the last of the coloring books. I had to save the cutest for last. And then I picked up <clears throat> some reading books. Where'd they go? There they are. So I actually went on just for these. Um, a lot of them are actually, I think all of them, no, all but one is fantasy. <laughs> so... <clears throat> The first one, this one is called Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. And I'll just read you guys the synopsis on the back. So it says, Princess, prisoner, orphan, rebel. Theodosia was six when her country was invaded and her mother, the Fire Queen, was murdered before her eyes. On that day, the Kaiser took Theodosia's family, her land, and her name. <coughs> Excuse me. Theo was crowned Ash Princess, the title of shame to wear in her new life as a prisoner. For 10 years, Theo has been a captive in her own palace. Then one night, the Kaiser forces her to do the unthinkable. With blood on her hands and all hope of reclaiming her, her throne lost, she realizes that surviving is no longer enough, and she does have a weapon. Her mind is sharper than any sword. For ten years, the Ash Princess has seen her land pillaged and her people enslaved. That all ends here because power isn't always won on the battlefield. So yeah, so and then there's a sequel. So I'm super excited about this one because I think... Well, at least I hope it'll have a lot of like world building in it. Um, I believe this is a YA novel. Um, I'm typically drawn to those, especially in fantasy. Um, but yeah, I think it sounds really good. So I'm super excited for that one. And then the next one, I actually saw this on a booktube channel. Um, it was Peru's Project and it is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Yes, insights, interviews, and more, it says on here. Um, so when war orphan Rin aced the, ki uh, the Kiju, the empire-wide test, to find the most talented youth to learn 
uh, at the academies. She surprised everyone, test officials, the guardians who wanted to marry her off, and further their criminal enterprise, and even herself. But being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not easy at Syngard. <clears throat> the most elite military school in Nikan. I'm making up pronunciations of these words. I have no idea. <laughs> Targeted by rival classmates for her color, poverty, and gender, Rin discovers that God's long thought dead are very much alive and that she possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism that could be the weapon the Empire desperately needs. While Nikara is at peace, its enemy and former occupiers, the Federation of M Mugen, bides its time, and the Third Poppy War is just a spark away. Rin's shamanic powers may be the only way to save her people, yet as she discovers more about the god that has her chosen, or has chosen her, the vengeful phoenix, she fears that winning the war may cost her humanity, and it may already be too late. So I think this sounds really good. This is also, um, a series, I believe, um, but I think it'll talk, I think it'll be very, like, interesting insight into culture as well as the fantasy world so i am super excited about this one i'm excited about all of these honestly and then the next one i picked up was the spellbook of katrina van tassel a story of sleepy hollow um i love like adaptations and twists on um like classic novels and like of course the twisted tales with the disney one like taking disney stories and twisting them and all that kind of stuff um or fairy tales, not so much Disney stories in general, but <clears throat> I love this kind of stuff. So one of my favorite books of all time is called The Hollow, and I can't remember the artist's name, or the artist, the author's name, um, but if I can find it, I will try to remember to link it, or just ask me in the comments, and then, because I'm, I'm not going to be able to edit and upload this video for a while, so I might forget, but <laughs> um, that's one of my favorite books, and it's a take on Sleepy Hollow. So when I saw this one, I was like, oh, I need to read this. Um, so when itinerant schoolmaster Ichabod Crane arrives at the, in the spooky village of Sleepy Hollow, Katrina Van Tassel finds herself instantly drawn to him despite her family's wishes. Brought together by their mutual love of books and music, Ichabod and Katrina embark on a secret love affair, sneaking away into the woods after dark. All while praying, they do not catch sight of Sleepy Hollow's legendary headless horseman. That is until All Hallows Eve, when Ichabod suddenly disappears, leaving Katrina alone and in a perilous position. Enlisting the help of her friend and rumored witch, Charlotte Jansen, Katrina seeks the truth of Ichabod Crane's disappearance, investigating the forest around Sleepy Hollow using unconventional, often darkly magical means. Um, what they find forces Katrina to question everything she once knew and to wonder if the Headless Horseman is perhaps more than just a story after all. So yeah, that just sounds really good. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I just like things when they kind of put a different twist and take on classic novels. So that's that one. And then this is also, I think, a YA novel. I don't think the last two were. Um, the first one and this one are. Maybe they all were. I don't remember. But the... The last one I just talked about doesn't sound like it should be YA, but anyway. <laughs> um, the Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. Um, this one just sounds super cute and fun. Um, so Rin has one has one unread text message on her phone, and it's been there for almost a year. She hasn't tried to read it. She can't. She won't, because that one message is the last thing her best friend ever said to her before she died. But as Rin finds herself trapped in the Denver International Airport on New Year's Eve, thanks to a never-ending blizzard on the one-year anniversary of her best friend's death, fate literally, literally runs into her, and his name is Xander. When the two accidentally swap phones, Rin and Xander are thrust into the chaos of an unforgettable all-night adventure filled with charming and mysterious strangers, a secret New Year's Eve bash, and a possible Illuminati conspiracy hidden within the airport. But as the bizarre night continues, all Rin can think about is that one unread text message. It follows her wherever she goes because Rin can't get her brilliantly wild and free-spirited best friend out of her head. Rin can't move on. But tonight, for the first time ever, she's trying, and maybe that's a start. As moving as it is funny, the chaos of standing still is a heartwarming story about the earth-shattering challenges life throws at us and the unexpected strangers who help us along the way. Again, don't really know why, I just thought it sounded really good. Um, I think there will probably be a little bit of humor in this, I hope. Um, and I <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny that they talk about the Illuminati conspiracy um, in the hotel, because I was watching, I don't know, something probably on Facebook um, that talked about that, and I just thought it was like kind of hilarious, like about the 
writing on the wall, literally in the paintings and stuff. So yeah, um, it just sounded really super cute. So those are the books that I picked up. Um, I just really wanted to, I don't know, get some books that I don't need really, but uh, it was fun. <laughs> so I'm glad to have these and I just need to work through my Harry Potter book and then I can finally read something else. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and I am into it. It's just hard for me to find time to like sit and read a physical book. So I'm trying to carve out time into my day every day, but yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, if you are new here, don't forget to like subscribe and comment and Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and that is all. I will talk to you guys soon. Stay safe and healthy. I love you and I'll see you later. Bye.